Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a good day of trading. Uh, if you are so kindly, if take a second out of your time, uh, if you like the content, if we like uh, what we're doing, especially with the unbiased day-to-day -day, uh, kind of process of uh, the PS60 theory, all we ask is take a second, uh, like the video, share, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. And for all you guys who are interested in uh, the PS60 theory, uh, nobody else on the planet uh, trades it but us. Um, and if you like to get uh, a kind of a taste, a 30-day kind of a kick the tires sort of scenario, I would love to expose you to the wonderful world of pivots. There'll be a link somewhere uh, below the comments. So I'll be looking forward to meeting you guys and working with you guys uh, soon. So let's get to the tape. Uh, if you look on the surface today, uh, like my mom says, no news is good news. Uh, if you look at the NASDAQ 100, NASDAQ posted uh, a little bit of a gain today. Q's, you know, down about a buck, but you could see the formation holding uh, pretty, you know, pretty firm. Uh, last couple of days has just been kind of hugging uh, the five and the 10 day moving average, giving it a little bit of a bounce. Uh, your names that kind of were a little bit of a dead in the money type of scenario starting to wake up. The first one uh, that woke up uh, yesterday was Apple, right? Engulfed its earnings day, kind of waking up. Like I said in last night's video, it still needs to reclaim back uh, the 50-day moving average, but at least it's going in the right direction. That's a very, very positive sign when companies have a crappy or at least reaction to earnings, and then they start kind of bouncing back. So Apple, again, not out of the woods uh, just yet, but it's still about maybe a day, day or two away about reclaiming about the 50-day moving average. This is a super duper important level in the next two days. You can see here what happened uh, last time uh, it reclaimed on January the 18th. It went from literally 185 uh, to 196 in four days. So it's going to be very, very important next day or so uh, for Apple to reclaim back uh, the 50-day. Um, Google, right? Google is another name. Uh, you can see here, again, now that it had another, another crappy reaction to earnings it did reclaim back the 50-day moving average a couple of days ago with this really, really aggressive hammer. The last couple of days, it's been trying to fight into and get out of supply. As you can see, back-to-back -back days now has been rejected uh, off the 20-day supply. It's going to need a little bit of work uh, to get above that. The only problem with Google and uh, Meta, I just wanted to give you a little heads up. Like I thought in the next couple of days, like I said yesterday, uh, I thought Meta was going to wake up and have another run. A little problem this uh, this evening, maybe it affects it, maybe it doesn't, uh, but Snapchat uh, came out with earnings and you guys would, you know, if you guys don't know, it's getting killed, right? It really, really getting killed. Uh, it's down about 25, 30% uh, after the close. Is it going to affect Meta? Is it going to affect Google? Uh, you know, we'll see, you know, we'll see here, but kind of going back to Meta, um, it needs to really defend the earnings lows, right? As you can see here, uh, it stopped at the earnings lows today and it stopped at the earnings lows, well, day of earnings. So it's gonna need to defend this level because if it starts getting below this earnings low, then there is going to be a little bit of a rug pull. So I, it's gonna be very, very important for Meta for tomorrow to kind of defend those earnings lows, bounce back and start reclaiming today's highs. The good thing about what we're seeing on Meta, even though it's down about 20 points in the last two sessions. Keep this in mind, on the earnings date, right? On the earnings release date, the following day, it was up 85 points. So it's still up about 65, 65 points net net on the last couple of days. So going into tomorrow, it's gonna be very interesting to see uh, if they don't defend the earnings low in the same literally low of today's channel, then we will have an, uh, a kind of a short, you know, we'll, we'll have a short, uh, play there. But if they do defend it and start taking out today's channel, if you look at the 60 minute view, right? If it starts taking out today's channel and gets above all the supply, maybe we start getting a move back. The key with Meta, and it kind of applies to Amazon as well. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. The key with Meta and Amazon is we need to start seeing deep out of the money short-term calls. And, and the, the reason by that is all these stocks, all these high beta institutional darlings, they're, they're fueled by institutional money. 
nothing happens, nothing gets squeezed uh, without institutional money flows starting betting uh, deep out of the money, uh, short-term expiration calls or puts, depending which way you're looking at the market. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see tomorrow, especially if there's any early morning weakness. If they do start coming for, you know, the 475, the 480 weeklies, even the 500s for next week. So the, the, the stock is going to be directly correlated by institutional money flow um, in the options market to see if it gets it going. So Meta, I'm definitely watching for tomorrow on both sides, on both sides uh, of, the, of the trade. Uh, Amazon, kind of the same thing, right? Amazon is just really doing a great job of holding its earnings lows. Uh, earnings lows and just, just sitting here. And you can see here, uh, three days in a row, uh, Amazon has held uh, the earnings lows. That's a good sign. But just like Meta, if there is a rug pull, and again, we were always prepared on both sides of the market, if Amazon starts losing its earnings lows, just like Meta, yeah, of course it can get pulled. But the key is if it starts reclaiming back today's channel, like we, we, we talked about on Meta a few minutes ago, it could start waking up as well. So we're definitely set up. I mean, in, in a perfect world for me, and I think for everybody who trades uh, high beta or mega cap technology stocks, we'd like to see a second run on these things, right? We, we really would, especially Meta, because Meta, if you guys remember on the earnings date, they were coming for 485, 500 calls repeat on loop, like you, like they were running out of, you know, running out of time. So it's very, very important uh, that we get to see another run in these things or else the mar market will represent a little bit of a tired scenario and potentially uh, a buyer's strike. NVIDIA, right? So it took NVIDIA, it took NVIDIA from November, right? From November to all the way to January to finally break out and get above the 500 level, right? So it took literally a couple of months. It took no time. It took no time for to get from 500 to 600. Maybe it took, what, a week? week and a half. And today, NVIDIA, you, you woke up pre-market, you saw NVIDIA trading 710, 712, and that was a pretty good pull. We'll get to the pivots in a second. This is literally uh, literally my only trade of the day today. Um, and believe me, I didn't wake up today. Um, I didn't wake up today and said, well, you know what? NVIDIA is going to be a, on my focus list. You know, I always have it in my mind for, for a potential pull, but it was definitely not on my focus list. Well, again, we'll get to the pivots in a second, but you can really tell um, how delicate a stock is uh, especially around round numbers if it gets rejected. Like, by no means do I think this is the top for NVIDIA, but it really is setting up kind of an interesting over the next couple of days. In case it does lose uh, the five-day moving average, we'll definitely have another opportunity uh, on it as well. Uh, same thing, SMCI. SMCI, uh, just like NVIDIA, uh, continues just to, to, to be strong, continues to be bought dips. Uh, SMCI at one point today, was down like 25 points and finished up 20. I mean, the, the, the power in these uh, semiconductor names uh, really, really continue. It's, it's a very, very good testament, uh, exactly all the overall sentiment of how strong the market is. Tesla, let's talk about Tesla for a second. So Tesla yesterday, we talked about Tesla, put in this, you know, put in this hammer, which is usually a generally a good thing. But as of yesterday, it didn't take out a previous day's channel. Today, it actually did. Right, it held uh, it held yesterday's low pre market, and it actually took out the previous day's channel. As you can see here, it stopped on this orange line, which is the five day supply. And the last time it held, hit the five day supply, the next day it just rolled over again. I want to watch Tesla for the next couple of days, both sides, right? Both sides. We obviously know uh, it held the bottom channel today, and yesterday's channel is exactly the same price. But I'm very curious to see if Tesla does start to reclaim back the five and the 10 day moving average in the next couple of days. The reason why I bring this up, remember we, a couple of minutes ago, we were just talking about Meta and how we need to see a uh, deep out of the money call buyers come in. We actually saw that today, okay? And when the stock was like, you know, and again, it wasn't a, a huge move today. It was just a little bit of a dead cat bounce, but a dead cat bounce with option flow potentially could trigger the stock. And I want to keep an eye on Tesla in the next couple of days uh, to the upside, right? To the upside, obviously, again, I'm always watching it to the downside because it's still uh, it's still in a dead downtrend. But if, like I said a minute ago, if it could reclaim back the five-day and the 10-day moving average, maybe this thing does wake up and starts attacking the top of the channel here on January 30 highs. Because what we did see today, like I said, is what exactly what, what I'm looking for in Meta. We started seeing weekly 190, 195 calls coming in we saw next week's 200 and 205 calls coming in, and they weren't coming in for 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 dollars. They were coming in for three, four, 500 grand. So th th that's what we need. We need the institutional money first, 
And then we need to see the stock reclaim back uh, intermediate or short-term supply. And that's what really triggers the stock. So let's definitely keep an eye on Tesla for tomorrow, especially if it could reclaim back the 5, 10-day moving average. If it doesn't, we obviously know what the downside pivot is. Uh, it's the same price, literally, uh, as it was yesterday's low, as today's pre-market low. And this thing could uh, get going as well. One name that continues to uh, do very, very well, uh, well, not continues, but do doing very, very well is PLTR. We talked about this last night. PLTR had a massive, massive run. They were coming for short-term 23, 25, and $27 calls. What's interesting about the name, it gives you a, a really good, clear path entry for the stock for a pot potential continuation. If you guys notice, the November 21st highs are exactly the highs that were put in today. Exactly. So it's got rejected off the 1121 highs and it's got rejected off today's highs literally at the same price. So if PLTR in the next couple of days starts taking above, you know, starts getting above, you know, this 2185 level, I'm just going to give you guys the price. It's literally the same price. If PLTR can start building above 2185, right? You see that? That's the high on um, that's the high on November 21st. That's also the high from today. So if they could start building above that 2185 level, maybe this thing does take off. Maybe there is a day two, day three, a potential run into this 2450 supply. So there's a lot of really good ways uh, to attack the market. But let's say they pull the tape, right? Let's say they they pull the tape. Look at AMD, right? Look at AMD. And again. Is this a scenario that, you know, it's it's poised to get a pullback? Not necessarily, but like I said all the time, every single day, don't we need to be prepared, right? You see how today it stopped at the 20-day support and bounced? You see how here on uh, January 31st, it hit the 20-day support and bounce? Now, the point is, what happens if it doesn't bounce tomorrow, right? What happens if it starts losing the 20-day moving average? Well, that's the whole point of being prepared on both sides. So if there is a pull in the market tomorrow, I definitely want to keep an eye on the AMD. Absolutely. I definitely want to keep an eye on AMD for another pull. So we're very, very prepared. And that's the most important thing, whether you're trading the PS60 theory, whether you're trading, um, you know, Fibonacci's, where you, with whatever, how a, however you decide to trade the market and put your, your capital at risk, you need to be prepared on both sides. And that's one constant I keep on reminding new traders every single day. Don't get locked into a bias. It's okay to be wrong. Have a game plan and let that game plan organically play out. Because if you try to force the issue, if you try to squeeze water out of a rock, you're going to be fighting the tape. You want to you want to uh, swim in the direction of the stream. You don't want to uh, uh, swim against it. That's a very, very important part. So tomorrow, we're definitely set up here. I'm watching for Meta and Amazon potentially for them to lose their bottom channels. But if they hold their bottom channels, yes, I would absolutely love for them to wake up to have a day two, day three run and to and start attacking the earnings highs. But again, we want to be prepared on both sides. Uh, a name you guys should really watch, and congratulations for all you guys who caught it today uh, in the webinar, is New York City Bank. You guys remember last year there was a run, uh, there was a run on this SNLs, right? They had some really, really bad, uh, you know, couple of weeks. Uh, New York City Bank, guys, watch this thing. I know a lot of you guys are, are long today, uh, short today, and congratulations uh, you know, from 490s, uh, this thing got hit. This thing went all the way down to 396. Uh, they were coming for the short-term uh, $4 puts, we got, which got paid out today. But they were also coming short-term for, for uh, the February and March 350s. And, and, the guy, and the stock is at 420. So again, uh, it's, it's one of those fluid situations. We'll have a lot of news, but boy, oh boy, this thing got uh, really, really hit. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't look great going into uh, short-term. Let me give you guys uh, some other ideas. Obviously, I gave you guys a few ideas here uh, going into tomorrow. But let me give you guys some charts that I kind of like. Obviously, we talked about this PLTR. Look at Roku, right? Check the earnings data on Roku, but look at Roku's chart. Look how tight this thing is getting. If Roku starts reclaiming the 50-day moving average, this thing could really move. That's a nice-looking chart uh, going into Roku, going into tomorrow. The question is, can it confirm? Uh, look at a name like Carvana, right? It has like, what? 40% short interest. Uh, it broke out today above the 50-day moving average. The only reason it stopped uh, at the Bollinger Band. If this thing could reclaim the Bollinger Band, who knows? Maybe it could have started attacking uh, the January uh, 22nd high. So it's something very, very uh, important to watch uh, for tomorrow's session. Uh, obviously, like I said this morning, um, you know there wasn't a lot of pivots. There just wasn't. Uh, but the ones we got, and I, I always say this, uh, you know that like there's the acronym... 
Uh, YOLO, you, on, you, know, you only live once. Well, our acronym is YONO. You only need one. And this is the whole, this is the whole point of trading. And, and it is for me. When you trade beta, they have such big ranges. You don't need to be creative. Uh, I was initially watching uh, Tesla for that 175 breakdown. Didn't happen. Uh, Amazon stopped exactly uh, at supply. Uh, GameStop, I was watching the 1340 builds below and never got the 1340 trade to 1343. And here's the point, right? You only need one, right? Meta never got to the sneaky 69 pivot. Here was the trade of the day. This was definitely the trade of the day. Uh, 684 held twice. If it builds below, it can flush for experienced traders only. And I say that because, again, you really need to have some sort of level of experience uh, to trade NVIDIA. And this was definitely the trade of the day. Here was NVIDIA. Here, let me show you the 60-minute view. You see this? Uh, you see this uh, 684? You see this candle here, 684? Well, 684 held twice. And once it lost the 684, this thing just got absolutely hit, went all the way down to 663. Definitely, It was literally my only trade of the day. I, I re-entered it twice, but a beautiful move. Absolutely beautiful move on NVIDIA. Congratulations for you guys who caught the whole move down uh, into the 60s. And the point is wait for value. This was the unexpected value of the day. And the question is tomorrow, well, what's going to happen next? To be determined, this is why this is the greatest reality show that's not on television. Again, for all you guys who are joining us or plan to join us, uh, who are curious about pivots, guys, again, I would love to expose you uh, to the wonderful world of the PS60 theory. Um, I think after 30 days, it's going to really, really change your mind how you look at the market. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Take